Can you believe there are less than two weeks until Kirby Planet Robobot releases in Japan? And because of that, Nintendo has been revealing a ton of new info on the game between trailers and Famitsu articles. So it's time to bring out the old analysis machine once again to see what secrets and hidden details we can find. Of course, be sure to watch our previous analysis on Planet Robobot as we'll be referring back to it throughout this one. With all that said, let's get started. While the basic plot has been laid out for Planet Robobot, we don't know everything yet. Again, it's not as if Kirby has the most complex of stories, but we do see new CG footage of Kirby facing off against an enemy armor. This seems to take place soon after the initial cutscene, so is there more to the beginning or will cutscenes be slightly more prevalent in this game? We're leaning more toward the former considering Kirby's history. But a recent Famitsu article has also revealed that there will indeed be fights against Meta Knight and DDD in the game. It appears as if Meta Knight is the one being captured and controlled this time thanks to the device on his mask. Meanwhile, the DDD fight is revealed to be against a clone of DDD created from his cells. Famitsu states that the clone considers Kirby his greatest rival and will hunt him down. More interesting though is that Susie can be seen next to the clone. We put forth the theory she would rebel against Holtman Works Company, but now it appears as if she's a key member. Just what is the story behind her? While we don't know that, we have gotten a look at new artwork that shows off what every level theme will be. We can see the plains, the small city, the docks, the desert, and a more futuristic city with stars and musical notes nearby. It looks like Kirby has to travel along each limb of this massive machine before entering the center to finally defeat the Holtman Works Company. Though that covers the world themes, the gameplay trailers show off several new levels that Kirby can explore. For one, there's another shooter section that takes place in the laboratory that we saw previously. However, this section is colored yellow, which we've yet to see. As before, it's hard to place whether the laboratory is just one massive level or several different ones. The trailers actually show off more sections. One has a background that we've already seen before, except this section has a new rotating obstacle that electrifies when it reaches the foreground. The other is a simple purple variation of the laboratory. With so many variations, we believe that many of the sections will be separate levels. Other new levels include what seems to be the underground of the planes level, as many of the assets seem similar, including the pipes and large stacks of wood. Uniquely, there's a swinging hammer to serve as an obstacle. We also get a look at a new cloud-like level with power lines in the background. However, these clouds may actually be part of the same desert that we saw the oil mixers in. In a later scene, the clouds make an appearance along with the oil mixers and the power lines, which turn out to be spaghetti on forks. Strangely, there's also a light bulb device nearby that we have no idea what it might do. The final new level comes from the eShop trailer, where Kirby is swimming deep underwater in a very dark area, while mechanical sharks swim between the background and foreground. These all paint a bigger picture of what kind of places Kirby will visit, but we also get a taste of what Kirby will be doing in the levels. In the casino, we see a new puzzle mechanic where Kirby picks up a Game Boy-shaped device that controls a mechanical Kirby in the background. He then has to manipulate it in order for him to make his way forward. In another instance, we finally see what the batteries are for. In this case, Kirby uses it to power up a nearby machine with an open slot. The machine then cuts through a nearby obstacle, allowing Kirby to continue on. Finally, we see a variation of the typical snowman puzzle, except this time Kirby has to use his mech to place the top scoop of ice cream. The levels are certainly looking fun, but we also got a look at some more new and returning enemies that can be found in Planet Robobot. There's the returning Pacto, Big Waddle Dee, Samir, Mumby, Chili, a new variation of the Waddle Dee that can fly their mechs in jet mode, and Mr. Frosty, who so far can only be seen as a fight in Team Kirby Clash. But then there are the many new enemies, or at least destroyable obstacles like the lasers that shoot at things below, and a large machine that appears to be charging a laser to fire at Kirby before he destroys it. Actual new enemies include the diving suit creature that we pointed out in the previous analysis, but this time we see that it does use its weapon as a ball and chain. Then there's a new large enemy that's an octopus in a diving helmet, and a jet mode shooter specific boss that looks like some kind of mechanical fortress. We even see it shooting out lasers as well as a sweeping flamethrower. But the most interesting new enemy is this Psychic. It attacks by sending out balls of energy and can even put a shield around itself. However, that shield doesn't protect it from being swallowed. The reason it's so interesting though is because this is the enemy that grants Kirby the ESP ability. We're finally able to see ESP Kirby in action. 
he's able to teleport short distances and send out balls of psychic energy. It appears that it's also possible for him to disappear then reappear with a burst of energy for some major damage. And considering his psychic nature and his hat, he seems like a pretty obvious reference to Ness from Earthbound. Other confirmed abilities include our first look at Mirror Kirby's gameplay and how he can duplicate himself to damage enemies. Then there's Jet Kirby who we knew would be featured in the game, but this is our first look at him. And the same goes for Hammer Kirby, though this is the first time we've seen that ability without the new DDD amiibo. Finally, we see that Sleep Kirby will return as well. There's also a few details on the other new abilities. Dr. Kirby is able to store the potions he creates for later use, and we see confirmation that Poison Kirby's abilities won't work underwater. And then we have the Robobot Armor Modes. The Spark Mode can do more than just launch balls of electricity. If charged, it can unleash a massive beam that does major damage. The Ice Mode can perform a kind of sliding attack that freezes nearby enemies that are caught up in it, even the larger ones. Then there's our first look at the new wheel mode, which seems capable of changing planes at will, though this may be tied to a specific challenge. The wheel armor can also spin in place to cause some fiery damage. But perhaps the best part of this is that the large octopi enemies drop takoyaki balls as the health pickup. If you're familiar with Japanese food, then you'll realize the octopi are becoming fried octopus balls, which is simply hilarious. Not sure how they taste as roadkill, though. We then see the two new armor modes, Mike Armor and ESP Armor. The Mike Armor seems to be radically different from the limited use that Mike Kirby typically has. Rather than a screen-destroying ability, the Mike Armor seems capable of sending out musical notes when charged or launching sound waves from its speakers. Both of these moves are similar to the other modes, just with a musical theme. It's certainly different from taking out all nearby enemies in one simple shot. Meanwhile, the ESP armor can summon multiple psychic energy balls from the sky and even hover slightly while generating more psychic energy in its hands. Next is the jet armor which seems to be able to perform a kind of dodge maneuver to avoid damage, but it can also shoot obstacles out of the way including Hothead's fireball. Finally, the bombs from the bomb armor are able to climb walls which seems necessary at times to solve certain puzzles. This is all pretty basic so far but we get hints of the other things the armors can do. At one point we see Kirby come across an armor just lying in wait in one of the levels before he commandeers it. Before this, we always saw him have to defeat a pilot before taking the armor. However, this indicates that either they can be simply found later on, or your armor is taken to specific places. It's not fully clear. But a pretty cool ability that we do see is Kirby using the armor to jump off a of Bronto Bird's head to launch himself even farther in the air. In addition, we got a clue to just how strong the armor is as we see Kirby smashed into the foreground while riding it, and it looks as if the mech is barely damaged. It's quite impressive. Then we get a better look at the sticker collectibles in action. It appears that there will be over 200 in the game, with most appearing to have original designs, crude Kirby art, Japanese characters, or numbers. However, players can use two different stickers, one on each arm, for their armor. Okay, we're almost done here, but we did get a small look at two of the other game modes that will be featured in Planet Robobot. In Team Kirby Clash, it looks like one of the spells Kirby can perform will slow down enemies, which will definitely be useful. But more interesting is the fact that this is the first time the timer has had over three minutes listed. Before, we assumed that three minutes was the limit, but that might not always be the case. Finally, we get a look at the victory menu in Kirby 3D Challenge. It looks like the game will focus on high scores in order to get gold trophies, though different medals can be earned as well. There are four in total which provide a greater challenge to the player to successfully complete. Kirby Planet Robobot is looking to be as fun as ever. While we still worry that the sheer power of the armors may take away from the experience, everything else looks like a great successor to Triple Deluxe. We'll be able to see for ourselves very soon when the Japanese version releases on April 28th. Of course, let us know if we missed anything in the comments. If you liked this video, be sure to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Game Explain to keep up with everything we do. Thanks for watching and make sure to stay tuned to Game Explain for more on Kirby and other things gaming.